Hey guys, I'm Tutorial Phil. Welcome back to my channel. This is kind of a belated unboxing, but really more of a detailed video. I already showed this in my Hermes bag collection, just the three bags. So I've already taken out a dust bag, but I'm just draping it. This is the Kelly Depeche 38, although I think it only comes in one size. And this is in a leather that I think is also discontinued. Most of the Kelly Depeche you see on the used market or pre-owned pre market is the Epsom leather, which is the stiffer leather that's very similar to Louis Vuitton's Taiga leather. This one is Vache Liege, I believe. I've seen some different spellings, so I never could really confirm exactly what the proper way to say it or spell it is. And this color is gold, which is still in production. So this color is in production, but I believe this leather is also discontinued. It's grain, it's a grain leather. It's pretty stiff, but I think the surface texture is softer than Epsom. Epsom, the texture I think is a bit bumpier, whereas this is smoother, but you can still see the graininess of it. This is, I think, the, what they call the cellier version, which has the contrast stitching outside. You can see it has white stitching, which is more a bit kind of off-white now, beige, but I think it was originally white. This is the platinum hardware, so it's the silver colored hardware. And it comes with pretty much everything for this briefcase. It's a Kelly Depeche briefcase. This is the key cloche that has two sets or a pair of the same keys. I don't usually put the lock on for display because I'm just, I know it's going to start rubbing against the metal hardware, but I do have the original lock for it. It's the standard also pl uh, palladium, palladium plated or coated hardware. This does not come with a shoulder strap. You could retrofit it with one using these metal buckles or hinges here, but they're pretty thin. So if you use metal clips, they're going to eventually erode and break these clips. So if you want it to put a shoulder strap on this, you'd probably need plastic clips. And unlike the Kelly, this goes straight up and down. That's the that's the easiest way to quickly differentiate what is the briefcase style as opposed to the regular, but it has the same closure system. It has these arms that hook onto this closure here, and there are two slots, so you can make it tighter or looser. And then this style is gusseted. I believe that's also quite different from the regular Kelly bags. This has two main com gusseted compartments and then it has like a front slot. So there's three compartments inside, but only two of them are gusseted and can expand. And the condition of this is really good for a bag that I think is around, I think this bag might be 10 years old now. Some of the leather I can see is starting to dry a little bit. It's going to be hard to come off on the camera, but you might be able to see a little bit of it. I don't think this bag was ever spod. It does have a semi-gloss finish to it. And this is the back where you can see how the arms are stitched through and in the back. And that's a signature Hermes style. You can see that on the regular Kelly bags, the Birkin and I think the Gypsier, the, uh, the one of the newer messenger bag styles. And the handle is wrapped around some sort of cork material so it's not just a thin leather handle which that's one of my biggest pet peeves when buying a luxury bag is i don't like those handles that are just one strip of leather i like the rolled handles or handles like this that have some substance to it and this is even though it's pretty stiff leather it's not structured all the way so due to aging you can see on the bottom, it's starting to bend in. And the problem with that is sometimes it doesn't want to sit on a flat surface straight. It can easily just fall over. So I've been trying to sort of train it, retrain the leather so that it's more straight on the back so that when it stands, 
it can be securely stood like this. I don't remember exactly what I paid for it. I think it was around 5000 and I purchased it off a, a curated site called First Dibs. I don't think First Dibs always sells their own products. They're also, like I was saying, like a curator. Unlike Fashion File or The Real Real, I think some of the stock that they offer on First Dibs on their website is coming from third-party vendors. So you do have to be careful and do your research, but First Dibs does back it up and I'm sure they get part of the commission when the products sell through their website. So they have been around for a while. They seem really reputable and you can also ask the seller directly any questions or to send you more pictures, which I did, to make sure it was the condition that was pictured. And they're really, this is like as pristine as it comes because it looks like the person never used it. The metal hardware is almost pretty much scratch free. You can see on the arms here, they're really bright and shiny. And the plastic wrapper is actually still on this part and on the part that's behind it. So the plastic is still here as well. And something that I was originally unsure of is the stamping. So the stamping here is not a gold or silver foil. It's actually like dark brown. And doing some more research, it turns out this is sometimes how they do it, depending on, I think, the leather or what color it is. Because normally you expect this stamp to be a silver foil color or a metallic foil color that matches the hardware. So in this case, I would have expected this to be silver but in fact, it's, it's like a dark brown stamp. And the thing, this is pretty stiff because the, the flap is leather on both sides. So it's not just a single flap of leather, it's leather stitch on both sides. So it is a bit more stiff, so it's not the easiest to quickly access this bag. And I, right now I have it stuffed because parts of it are actually unlined. There's no nylon or cotton lining in here. It's all leather and some of the compartments don't have lining. It's going to be a little bit difficult to show you, but one of the first compartments, this back is fully lined in that grained leather, but then on this back side, it's actually suede. It's the back side of this leather. So you get one strip that's lined and then everything else is actually suede. Even the sides here, that's suede, it's the back side of this leather. And in the second compartment, it's kind of the same thing, the back. The back side is lined, and then the front side is suede, but it has a strip of leather on top. And then lastly, like I was saying, so I, like I said, I have these all stuffed just to prevent the leather from sticking, if it might. This front pocket, though, is actually lined on both sides, so the back and the front is lined in the leather, so there's no suede here. However, you can see from the gussets here, this front pocket is not gusseted, so you really only want to store flat materials like folders or documents. Maybe an iPad, you might be able to get away, but I wouldn't recommend it. The back two slots here are gusseted and they can expand by releasing the arm here or relaxing it. But this is a pretty stiff bag. This leather is pretty stiff, so it's not, I can't say it's the most convenient bag and due to its shape and without a handle, it's not necessarily practical for every day. And this will fit a laptop, but the problem is I've upgraded to a 15 inch model, the MacBook. This is the one with the touch bar. And I'm not gonna try putting it in here on this video, but I did, try that before. It can fit, but then it presses up against the side. So if I compare the back, it looks like it should fit without any issue because in fact, this bag is wider than the laptop and also taller than the laptop. The problem is if you remember the sides are gusseted, so you don't actually get the full width of the bag for the laptop. So what you end up having to do is you have to 
release the gusseted sides and it pushes up against this arm in order to fit the laptop, which is gonna eventually stretch out the leather and every time you take your laptop in and out, it's probably gonna scratch the suede lining as well. So because of that, I don't think I would be able to use this as a work bag because it doesn't fit my current laptop. It will of course fit a 13 inch without much issue. You still might need to expand it a little bit. I still have an old 11 inch MacBook and of course it slides in with no issue. So just for size comparison there. Since this is gusseted, so I have my sunglass case here. It's really not the best for storing this either. You can put it in, but then you have to relax the arms and plus you see how the handle curves or the the top flap curves over. You're not gonna wanna have too many things in it because then you can't close the front flap because it'll be sticking out like this. I think this might be part of the reason why it was discontinued just because it's not practical for today's use because it is so flat. But I do think it's, it's a really handsome bag. I really like the silhouette. It's very classic and polished. It's pretty simple, but at the same time, just by looking at the design, you know that it's, it's, lux it's luxurious. You can of course fit things like a long wallet or a pocket organizer or wallet in here. It's just not gonna be the most easy to access. So you can easily fit that in there. This will still close without any issue because it's a, it's a pretty slim item. But like I said, if you start putting in thicker items like a sunglass case it can start it can start billowing out but this one is even actually not too bad so I put the Dior Ohm sunglass case it's actually not bad it could probably fit it which is great because I can use that to store my sunglass as well as sometimes I like to use this case when it's empty for my other things that I carry like lip balm or eye drops and the reason I really even found out about this bag and wanted to get it, I searched probably for a good six months before settling on this one because I really wanted a specific color. I wanted it to be as new as possible, but I also was very wary about fakes. My inspiration for getting this was a blogger and social media influencer. They're a duo. The website is the3f.com, which I'll link below if you're interested. They also are on Instagram. It's two guys, but the person who had this one, his name is Filippo, I think, which is kind of interesting since my name is Philip. The other thing is I actually was influenced by him to also get the, the sunglasses, which are in the sunglass case that I put in earlier. He had paired these two together and that I really liked the way he styled it. So I ended up getting both. So that's really the story of how I ended up learning about this and starting my journey in getting this. So next, I'm just gonna quickly try it on with um, some outfit so you can see how it looks like worn.
And that's my video. Subscribe for more videos and check me out on Instagram for the latest updates and exclusive content. Let me know if you have any questions and I hope to see you in my next video.